Hello, welcome to another Rets Pro video. This video tutorial is going to cover the basic installation setup of featured listings using our shortcode builder. To get started with, you need to be in your WYSIWYG editor in a page or a post, and you're going to see the Embed Listings button above the WYSIWYG editor. Let's click on that. The next thing I want to do in this video is I'm going to briefly describe the elements of what is all in here and how they are used in your featured listings. Uh, you can also use this for statistical data. You can use this to embed maps, maps with polygons. You can even use the polygon data with your statistical data. All of these other uh, how-to videos are going to be in the playlist down below this. Uh, this video will be the first in a series of videos. So uh, let's just go ahead and get started and, and start with the very first thing on the top of the list. The mapping tool. Uh, I'm going to only explain this. Uh, if you have a mapping uh, module, uh, the maps module or the geocoding, you will need those two items along with uh, either pre-geocoded data and along with a Google Maps API key. The Maps module and the Geocoding module both require a Google Maps API key, and that information of uh, how to set that all up is in the other videos for those products. Uh, in this video, I just want to briefly explain that this is what it would look like. Uh, you can also do a polygon, uh, a little bit more about the polygon and embedding maps in one of the other playlist videos below. Okay, so for this video, we're not going to be using a map. We're just going to use a featured listing. So the next thing in this uh, list here is the RSS. Well, the RSS is really not something that you need to concern yourself with. We have an SEO video that goes into greater detail with the RSS, but unless you're running a specific SEO project uh, that I'm referring to in the other video, you should just go ahead and ignore this option for now. Okay, so custom templates. What are the custom templates and how do you use them? Well, there are really only two types of templates. One is the default template that you'll see right here that's actually not a template. And uh, this is actually used for when you're doing statistical data, which is this button down here. The other types of templates are for the actual feature listings, whether you're gonna do a J carousel, um, you know, you can do all kinds of uh, anything you can imagine with the data and put that into a template layout and then what you will do is you will upload those templates again there's another video for that in the uh, templates video where these templates are located and how to access them well that's all located over there if you wanted to actually create a template here you could that's what this option is gives you an example of some of the code that you would want to copy and paste in here for this video, we're not going to be creating a template. We're going to use a pre-existing template. What we recommend, if this is your very first time, is to start with the feature template. The feature template is what we consider your go-to template in most cases. This will be a grid list layout. Um, it defaults in a grid layout. It is responsive and works with most themes with very minimal tweaking to make it conform to the width of whatever your theme layout is. Okay, so this is what we're going to use in this example. The next thing I want to talk about is the sort type. There are two different choices here, random and static. And what these two things mean, I'm going to give a brief uh, example of how I would use them, like giving you an example of a word in a sentence. I'm going to give you an example of how I would use this in a short code. What I would do is if I was creating a short code that said, today's top five most expensive listings in this subdivision, I would use static because I would want to sort by the highest to lowest using an order by value and an order direction value. I would want to use something that was static with a combination of those two things. If I just want random, uh, what does random mean? Well, random means this following. If I wanted to say, I would like to just show a sample a random sample. Say, for example, there is a city that has um, 300 
five million dollar plus properties and I would like to show three of them on my home page randomly well that is what I would use I would random and show three of them on my home page and it would randomly grab three of those from the database and just randomly display that so every time you refresh your page it'd be three different ones that is the case in scenario that most people would want to use all right so that is the explanation of sort type the next on the list is pagination when and when not to use pagination you never want to use pagination unless you intend to show more than 30 to 50 plus listings uh, the reason is, is when you start adding, and I'll just go ahead and say, for example, if I had a, a maximum capacity of results coming back that would meet up to 300, well, I would certainly want to use pagination. And if you're not happy with the, the count value, you can edit the count value. We're going to go ahead and do that, and we're going to edit the count value uh, and when this is generated. So that is an explanation of when you would use pagination is if you were going to have more than 30 listings, you would definitely want pagination. Uh, I'm going to go ahead in this particular video, I'm going to go ahead and use 300. Next item on the list, order by. Most of us will set this to price, but you're not limited to price. I just want to give you a couple of other uh, scenarios where people would do something like days on market DOM is a field. If you wanted to use DOM, days on market, and show the most recent listings on your homepage, then you would use order by DOM. Or you could even use order by MLS, uh, the MLS number being the highest to lowest, uh, lowest to highest, whatever your case may be then that would be another way of doing it. But in most cases, what we would do is use sort by price. So we're going to go ahead and select price. Most of us, again, uh, ascending or descending, we would probably choose descending. We want to basically show the most expensive listings, get those most expensive listings cached and indexed into Google. So we as realtors are doing this for our clients as an SEO project. We would always want to push the, uh, the Google indexing of the most expensive listings on the first pagination. So I hope that explains why we would do descending 99% of the time. I, I can just about never think of using ascending unless I was going to be doing something with um, a different field other than price. Okay, so that is an explanation of order by and order direction. The next thing is the count, which I've already explained. The count value really wants you, you just really want to make sure that you set it higher than what you are expecting to get back. So, or limit it to what you, you know, a minimum or a maximum. So in some cases on your homepage, for example, on your homepage, if you're going to create a featured template on your homepage, you never want to put more than six or maybe nine at most because those are going to slow down your homepage load times. The more listings you add to your homepage, the more data has to be queried, the more uh, th uh, the, the, these large thumbnails and images that have to be downloaded all into your home page so you want to keep that to a minimum of six to nine maximum listings on your home page i typically recommend six if you're using a j carousel uh, but never more than nine okay so that is a little explanation about the count value again now we get to the fun part the field types field types are nothing more than what you have mapped into the rets data from your RETS data provider. You have mapped all these RETS fields into your database, your MySQL database. Once they are in there, anytime you click on any of these add fields or any of this, it's, gonna, it's going to alphanumerically sort all of these values. So just so you know, if you're dealing with a very large database, 50,000 listings, maybe even 100,000 listings or more, like in this particular website, I have over 100,000 listings. If I select something like address or price or something that's going to be huge in the database, one of the most 
populated, fully loaded columns in the database, it's going to take this quite a while with 100,000 listings. So what we're going to do in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and use a county. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and select something that will be loading very fast on this uh, example. So we'll just type in county, add field. Okay, so now I'm going to get uh, all of the results coming back from whatever county. I'm just going to select uh, Austin County here, add that one. I just want to show you, though, that you can add as many counties. And this, this applies to every field that you select. So whatever field you select, city, subdivision, property type, etc. So if we just wanted to say, for this, we're just going to do the county of Austin. So we just took the other one out of there. So what we're going to do next is we're going to give it a property type. So let's go ahead and add a property type. you got to click Add Field. Now what we want to do is select a property type. So we're just going to select Residential. We're going to click on the green plus. We're going to add that. Now again, with this, if you were creating multiple filters, you're filtering in and you're filtering out. So what you need to know is, is that because I have selected Residential, and I have selected the county of Austin. And if I don't select anything else, then that means I am only bringing in residential listing information. If I want to filter out something, I just don't select it. It's already filtered out because I'm saying I only want these residential listings. And I only want residential listings in this county. And, the, and then if you wanted to add amenities such as I want... I only want residential listings in this county that have a above ground. No, we don't want above ground. <laughs> we would be looking for a in-ground pool. So we were just looking for one with an in-ground pool. And so we would do something like that. So that is an explanation of how you can create filters, multiple filters. You can do it for your community. You can do for your office or you want to do office listings it's the same thing so if i want to do office listings listing office name okay so there you have it i have all of the hundred plus thousand office names that have been sorted through here all the um, duplicates have been removed and so if i wanted to say hey i just want to get all of my office properties and just my properties based on all of these filters. As you can see, you can join multiple filters together to create a very custom, unique featured listings result on your page. Okay, so I want to talk about one more thing before I generate this uh, into a short code. I'm going to go ahead and I don't know if this Abram properties where they're located, so we're going to get rid of that. So this is how you actually undo some of your changes. You can also edit these things in here, but you do need to make sure that they were generated from here. You should never just type into these things here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and no, I'm just going to go. We don't need an indoor pool. I'm going to go ahead and leave just residential listings in the county of Austin. We're going to use pagination and we're going to use the highest to lowest on the price. And we're going to generate this thing. Okay, so we have our page here uh, with the short code generated. And like I was saying to you earlier, if you're not happy with the pagination count, if that's not the, the count number that you wanted it to be, you can manually change this number right here. You can easily change this number to a grid layout, which would be a 12, a 9, 12, 15, something like that. So you would manually change that there if you wanted to. Um, you would also, uh, if you decided, hey, I need to change my count value, you can change that there. So really there's not anything for you to do with this, uh, uh, you know, to edit anything. And you should really not edit any of this manually unless you are uh, very familiar with your RETS fields and the values and how they're written and what's in your actual database. So I would just absolutely go ahead and publish this. We're just going to go ahead and hit uh, preview. 
Okay, so we have featured listings. We have what looks like 12, like we have for pagination. And uh, so the next thing you would want to do is go ahead and publish your page. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, check on the next uh, video in the playlist. If you have any other questions, uh, feel free to join us in the forums or open up a support ticket if you still need support. Thanks so much.